From Apple Valley News Now, First Alert Weather with Chief Meteorologist Josh Colberth. Meteorologist Josh Colberth, right now you're taking a live look at Kennewick. This view is brought to you by Yakima Federal, and it is cold out there for this morning as temperatures are down into the 20s and 30s in the Kittitas and Yakima Valleys. We're in the upper 30s right now in the lower Columbia Basin. We're seeing mid 30s to low 40s in the foothills of the Blue Mountains. So for right now, if you did have to break out the ice scraper, it would be in the Yakima Valley, but I do expect some of these temperatures to fall down even more, so stay tuned in regards to that aspect of the forecast. I'm going with heavy jacket weather, obviously for this morning in the Tri-Cities. Maybe a little bit later today, you'll be able to break out the light jacket, but it is not going to be a warm day out there. And then for tonight, we have more freeze washes in place. There's already one in place for the Yakima Valley. This is actually freeze warning in place until 9 for this morning, but for the lower Columbia Basin, for the Blue Foothills, there's a freeze watch in place from 11 p.m. tonight to 9 in the morning on Friday, so you'll have to take those measures again to protect the outdoor pets, the plants, and the plumbing. Here's the bottom line for the forecast moving forward. Dry and cool for today and tomorrow. Wet weather is looking likely from late Saturday through the weekend into early Monday. And then mountain snow is possible for Monday and Tuesday. We're not expecting that much, but uh, we are expecting some nonetheless. So I'll have another look at today's forecast. Also, I'll show you how much rainfall we're expecting from this weekend storm system. And, and all that's going to be coming up on Good Morning Northwest, which starts right now. Straight ahead on Good Morning Northwest, the Tri-Cities has made recent progress in its goal to reduce poverty in the area. And although it's slow going, one council says it's the little things that get the ball rolling. We have that story just ahead. But first, developing news as one person is dead and another is arrested out of Walla Walla after a shooting at a mobile home park. We have the latest details. Good Morning Northwest starts right now. This is Apple Valley News Now. Good morning, Northwest. On your side. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for Good Morning Northwest. I'm Jessica Jalal. It is Thursday, October 24th. Happy Thursday. We're going to start off with developing news out of Walla Walla this morning. The Walla Walla County Sheriff's Office is investigating a homicide that happened at a mobile home park. Now, the shooting happened just after 1.30 p.m. yesterday at the Prescott Mobile Estates. This was just off of F Street. Witnesses called 911, saying a man had a gun and was shooting at another person. Deputies with the Sheriff's Office, first responders with Walla Walla County Fire District 8, and a medical helicopter all responded to the scene. WWCSO says one person who suffered injuries died at the scene and one person was arrested. We will continue to update you with more information as soon as it's available. Now, the Pasco Fire Department is on a mission to help schools around the region become a heart safe campus. Apple Valley News Now's Monique Ledesma shows us how one of the elementary schools is making this a reality. We're going to do a hands only CPR, so that will help circulate oxygenated blood to their body until emergency staff can get there and get them to the hospital. And then they're also going to teach them how to stop the bleed if there's a major cut um, where they can apply a tourniquet properly um, and how to use a stop the bleed kit. Lang says this type of training ensures that when needed as many hands are on deck. The more people that we have trained for these life-saving things the more we can partner with our first responders and help them. Um, each one of them is only one person so the more that they can delegate to us, the more uh, we can save people's lives. It's really important because I am the only medical officer on staff here. So when there is an emergency, I can only handle so many things. It's really important that I can delegate to my staff because my goal is to save as many lives as I can. Hopefully all of them. Brooke Schulteis, who is the principal, says everyone knows practice makes perfect. So when Lang pitched the idea, she knew it was a step closer to providing safety within the school and community. Being prepared is always best practice, right? So just like we practice fire drills and we practice other drills throughout the year, this is one more opportunity where we are practicing extra procedures and extra skills to be safe in the event of an emergency. Schulteis says being a heart safe campus means upholding the school standards. The term we use here is that we are fiercely proud of our staff and our students and the work that happens here every day. And this is just one more opportunity to show how committed and dedicated the staff is to ensuring students have every need met. 
The school was able to train more than 30 staff members for free with the grant the Pasco Fire Department provided. That was our Monique Ledesma reporting. Thank you, Monique. Now, Monique also says while the school is not yet a heart safe campus, they are actively working on getting more teachers and staff involved to make it so. Turning to Yakima now, the Yakima City Council is discussing possible changes to flights out of the Yakima County Airport. Looking to increase revenue, air service consultants found that in order to generate the most income, they would need to add two weekly flights to Las Vegas. Alaska Airlines has not yet signed on for the twice weekly direct flight to Vegas, but according to the terminal director, the program is in negotiations. And we're, we're having to really work hard, but the people spoke and I listened and we're going to we're going to keep working at it until we get it. In talking with people, I, the Las Vegas is very popular for a couple of reasons. One is, of course, just the fun of the vacation, that whole aspect. But the other is there are many, many trade shows and business opportunities down there. And a lot of people travel to Las Vegas just for that reason for right. business. Right. The airport is also finishing up its restaurant and it's considering adding a kitchen and cafe. Making a difference, leaders and stakeholders are meeting to announce their latest efforts in poverty reduction in the Tri-Cities. This through the Economic Security for All program. And Riley Fitzgerald says the agency is celebrating its successes. The Benton Franklin Workforce Development Council invited a crew to its facility to highlight its recent successes. The team is celebrating poverty reduction, albeit the slow move out of it. One step at a time, it's a slow, hard battle, right? As we um, uh, look, each person's case is individual. So sometimes people just need a little bit of help to get the ball rolling. And so programs like EXA give, the, give people just a little bit of extra help, a little oomph to get the ball rolling, and then they can be successful on their own if they can just get a chance. And also touring a local employer to hear success stories of the economic security for all program in both employers and job seekers. One is taxes, D and notary. Yeah, by giving the training, the resources and the hope uh, that um, and uh, the knowledge that people actually care that there's a, there's an, actually an organization here in the community that actually cares about them, wants them to be successful. If we can help those people be successful and become taxpayers, they become a net plus for us instead of a net negative for us. And it just makes this whole region just a better place to live. According to Workforce, community reinvestment is what strengthens the community. In Kennewick, Riley Fitzgerald, Apple Valley News Now. Thank you, Riley. And Riley also tells us many stakeholders attended the meeting, including Senator Matt Banke. Looking ahead now, a quick note to tell you about what's happening tonight. There will be a meeting at the AC Davis High School Auditorium discussing the challenges and opportunities for public education funding in Washington. The event will have featured speakers from the Office of Superintendent of Public Instruction, the University of Washington, and the Washington Association of School Administrators. Now members of the community, school administrators, and policymakers are invited to learn more about the future of the state's public schools. Again, the event is tonight at AC Davis High School Auditorium in Yakima, and the event starts at 6 p.m. Now coming up next on Good Morning Northwest, a woman who went missing earlier this month has been found in Mexico, and police are saying it was a kidnapping. We had the details coming up, but first our Chief Meteorologist Josh Colbreth will have how your weather for today is looking. Good Morning Northwest, we'll be right back. Head to Queensgate Gardens in Richland for some fall family fun. Explore our corn and hay bale maze, zoom down the dump truck slide, try pumpkin archery, and get creative with pumpkin painting. New this year is laser tag and a U-Pick flower field. Make fall memories at Queensgate Garden in Richland. The last few years have been tough on Washington families who are facing record prices and wages just haven't kept up. But it's been a great few years for Congressman Dan Newhouse. Since he first got elected in 2015, his net worth has climbed from $2 million to almost $19 million. How'd he do that? By trading stocks of corporations that he votes to give billions of taxpayer dollars. It's time to put an end to Congressman Dan Newhouse's stock market hot streak. I'm Jared Sessler, and I approve this message. 
Democrat candidate Maria Beltran led a liberal Seattle group that tried to defund police and allowed chaos and violence to take over the streets. Like Beltran, House candidates Anna Kennedy and Chelsea Demas oppose initiatives that would lower gas prices and the capital income tax and allow you to opt out of the expensive long-term care tax. Seattle liberals Maria Beltran, Anna Kennedy, and Chelsea Demas do not share your values and are too extreme for Central Washington. Cough, cough, sneeze, sneeze, Achoo. needs, plop, plop, fizz, fizz, Alka-Seltzer Plus, cold and flu. When speed is what you need, bounce back fast with Alka-Seltzer Plus. Also try the new chewable fizzy chews. No water needed. Head to Queensgate Gardens in Richland for some fall family fun. Explore our corn and hay bale maze, zoom down the dump truck slide, try pumpkin archery, and get creative with pumpkin painting. New this year is laser tag and a U-Pick flower field. Make fall memories at Queensgate Garden in Richland. There's a new way your family can be targeted. AI imposter scams. Thieves using AI to commit fraud. You look scared, Whit. Well, I am. <laughs> That's very believable. Now this morning, the tools you need to know to protect your family on Good Morning America. A portion of the news is sponsored by Kubota. From Apple Valley News Now, first alert weather with Chief Meteorologist Josh Colbert. Welcome back to Good Morning Northwest. It is a cold start out there for this morning as we're around 40 degrees in the Kittitas Valley, although it is a little bit too warm for now to have to break out the ice scraper. But that is not the case in the Yakima Valleys. We're at 29 in Yakima, 31 for Toppenish, 30 for Sunnyside. So most of these temperatures are either at or below freezing. So again, you would have to break out the ice scraper, maybe crank up the car a little bit earlier. And then in the lower Columbia Basin, Maybe just a little bit too warm for that for now. It's 38 in the Tri-Cities, 38 for Benton City. Maybe a little bit closer to that territory in Connell where we're at 33 degrees. And then in the foothills of the Blue Mountains, 30s and 40s, pretty close to freezing. And Hepner also pretty close to freezing up in the mountains in places like Ukiah and Meacham. Here's your day planner for today. Lots of sunshine throughout the day at 8 this morning. Despite the sunshine, obviously it's still going to be pretty cold out there with 20s and 30s. By lunchtime, we're going to be up around 50 degrees, 51 for Hermiston, 48 for Yakima. And then by 4 p.m., we should be into the mid 50s with still plenty of sunshine, but clouds will be building into the late afternoon to early evening. That'll continue into tonight. So for today, mostly sunny. We're going to be cool, we'll be about 5 degrees below average for this time of the year. We will trend a little bit warmer into this weekend, but that's going to coincide with some big time rain chances. I'll show you those chances. I'll tell you how much rainfall we can maybe get from that storm system and all that's going to be coming up in a few minutes. Thank you, Josh. In Washington, a woman who went missing from Auburn has been found alive in Mexico. Now, police say the woman, Jacqueline Perez, who is six weeks pregnant, was kidnapped at gunpoint from her apartment earlier this month. One person has been arrested in connection with her kidnapping. Perez had only lived in Auburn for four months and had recently emigrated from Guatemala. We believe there was some sort of illegal activity happening that led to this that she was not involved in. <laughs> So she just was kind of caught up in it. There is a lot that still go over, but the good news is, the great news is, is that she was found and that she is safe. A 24 year old man was arrested in Houston, Texas this week in connection with her kidnapping, and he will be extradited to Washington to face charges. Now more statewide news, a Washington mother wants answers after her three year old son wandered away from his preschool. Now this happened two weeks ago at the Tequila Elementary School. Anna Maldonado or Maldon uh, Maldonado, excuse me, says her son showed up at her front door in the middle of the day after walking more than 100 yards away from the school. Maldonado says when she called the school, she found out the district's alarm system wasn't working which completely broke my heart because I was like, I'm trusting you. I'm leaving you my kids. I'm going to work. I expect them to stay in a safe spot. 
Maldonado says the teacher told her that she didn't look for the three year old because there are only two teachers for about 20 students. The district says it did an investigation and an internal review following the incident, and the district also says they're always working to ensure student safety. Coming up next on Good Morning Northwest, a new Wall Street Journal poll is showing one presidential candidate now has a narrow two point lead. We have the latest on the race to the White House after the break. And as we go to break, we're listening to some music. It'll play in just a few seconds. And it is Drake's Hold On, We're Going Home because the artist is celebrating a birthday today, even though you're probably heading to work and not home. Keep it right here. We'll be right back. Now's the time to get a great deal on taking care of your property. You need the number one selling subcompact tractor in the U.S. so you can do it all and do it right. Z-Series mowers that deliver a quality cut and Sidekick utility vehicles where durability meets speed. Right now, bring home select Kubota equipment for 0% APR for up to 84 months. Find a Kubota dealer near you at GoKubota.com. One great idea can change your life. That's the American dream right there. I want to be on a team with you. Shark Tank, new Friday on ABC and stream on Hulu. Goodwill provides opportunities for those that might have barriers to employment. Those barriers could be disabilities all the way up to recently incarcerated. And our job is to find a way to give these folks the skills to find gainful employment in the community. We provide such a wide variety of training. Our ECC organizations can get somebody a job. The relationships that are built through those programs gives these organizations a longtime employee if they so wish. Goodwill, your Halloween headquarters. Hi, I'm Carrie Isaacson and I'm running for State Senate from the 16th District. Unlike my opponent, who's aligned with the extreme far right and anti-women's health care, I believe in practical solutions that put people first. I'll fight for better health care and good paying jobs. I'm a moderate Democrat who believes that our district must be at the table in Olympia and it's not. Vote Carrie Isaacson, State Senate. McCree's been on so long. A lot of people bought their cars here. Our customers are somebody that wants to be able to come back to us after they buy that car for whatever reason, which is one of the reasons we do take so much effort in making sure that they're going to be drivable for a long period of time. So that's your daily journey. And so it's a lot more than just purchasing or something or a quick transaction. We're going to be here tomorrow to help you with whatever's on the car. Buying pre-owned with McCurley means your vehicle meets a higher standard. Find your way home in a Mazda certified pre-owned vehicle from McCurley Mazda. Cough, cough, sneeze, sneeze. Achoo. Needs, plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Alka-Seltzer Plus cold and flu. When speed is what you need, bounce back fast with Alka-Seltzer Plus. Also try the new chewable fizzy chews. No water needed. Be sure and vote. Mail-in ballots must be postmarked by November 5th. From Apple Valley News Now, first alert weather with Chief Meteorologist Josh Colberth. Welcome back to Good Morning Northwest. Today is going to be a very pleasant day out there, albeit it's going to be pretty cool as we'll be about five degrees below average for this time of the year. Mid 50s for the Yakima Valley, mid to upper 50s in the lower Columbia Basin and mid 50s for the foothills of the blue. Should be mostly sunny skies for today and wind should be pretty light. Now for tonight, it's going to be another pretty cold one in spite of the increase in clouds. Clouds at this point will be partly to mostly cloudy, but yeah, these overnight lows still pretty cold below freezing in the Kittitas and Yakima valleys, right around freezing for the lower Columbia Basin. Pretty much the same thing for the blue foothills. So across the map for tonight, you'll probably have to protect the outdoor pets, the plants and the plumbing. We'll keep it pretty dry as we head into Friday. Friday is essentially going to be a carbon copy of today's forecast. And then the weather gets a lot more interesting. Late Saturday through early on Monday, that's going to be the next storm system we're watching. So obviously Sunday looks like it's going to be the most active day of that stretch. We're going to be a little bit drier into Tuesday. Then we're tracking another storm system into the middle of next week. But let's focus on this late Saturday to early Monday storm system. Here's some of the rainfall totals we can maybe get. And this is subject to change but two inches of water up in the Cascades bouncing between a quarter to 
excuse me, bouncing between a tenth to a quarter of an inch for the valleys and basin and between a quarter to a half an inch for the foothills and mountains. And there could be a bit of a wintry element to this one, specifically for Monday and Tuesday. As snow levels could ping pong between 3,500 to 4,500 feet. So places like Cabbage Hill, Meacham, Ukiah, the Battle Mountain Summit on US 395, White Pass on US 12, those areas could receive a little bit of snowfall, but I'm thinking probably less than an inch for a Cascade and Blue Mountain Passes. So not really impressive in that regard. We're not expecting any significant impacts to travel, and we're not expecting any significant fluctuations to temperatures over the next seven days. Here's a seven day forecast for the Tri Cities. Cool and dry Thursday and Friday. Damp Saturday evening through Monday morning. Dry for Tuesday, and maybe some more wet weather into Wednesday. In Yakima, crisp and dry for the next couple days. Then wet weather comes back into the forecast, likely peaking on Sunday. For Ellensburg, quiet weather through Friday, active late Saturday through early Monday, then maybe some more active weather into the middle of next week. For Hermiston, dry with highs in the upper 50s for Thursday and Friday, active Saturday evening through Monday morning, a reprieve for Tuesday, but maybe more slated for Wednesday. Then for Walla Walla, nice dry fall days Thursday and Friday, chances for wet weather start on Saturday, peak on Sunday and Monday, but also stick around for Tuesday and Wednesday. Thank you, Josh. Now, overnight, the Wall Street Journal releasing a new poll showing former President Trump has taken a narrow two-point lead nationally. It's a four-point swing from August when Vice President Kamala Harris was up by two percentage points. The race is still within the margin of error. ABC's Perry Russom has more. During a CNN town hall, Vice President Kamala Harris trying to capitalize on former President Trump's former chief of staff, John Kelly, saying Trump fits the definition of a fascist. He's just putting out a 911 call to the American people. Understand what could happen if Donald Trump were back in the White House. Kelly also claiming in an interview with the New York Times, Trump has been complimentary of Hitler. The Trump campaign denies that happened. Trump calling Kelly a total degenerate. Do you think Donald Trump is a fascist? Yes, I do. And I, and I also believe that the people who know him best on this subject should be trusted. Trump on the campaign trail in Battleground, Georgia, casting doubt over election security without any evidence. Get out and vote. Be a little careful. Make sure your vote gets counted. Trump says he will shut down the southern border on day one and claims migrant gang members have a Nazi symbol on their faces. Historically, when you have swastikas on your forehead and swastikas all over your cheek and lots of other symbols all over your face, historically, that person isn't going to be a tremendous help to our economy. Inflation is a top issue for voters. Harris asked about the price of groceries. And part of my plan is to create a new approach that is the first time that we will have a national ban on price gouging which is companies taking advantage of the desperation and need of the American consumer and jacking up prices without any consequence or accountability. Trump yesterday saying this is how he'll fix the issue. We're going to drill, baby, drill, and that's going to bring everything down. Tonight, Harris is starting a concert series called When We Vote, We Win, and that'll happen in Georgia. Bruce Springsteen is performing, and Trump has rallies in Arizona and Nevada. And coming up next on Good Morning Northwest, rapper Cardi B isn't feeling A-OK. -okay. This after a medical emergency that, um, and more of that is coming up in your entertainment news after the break. And as we go to break, we're listening to a song that... Senator Curtis King has delivered for you. That's why the media calls Curtis King the Republican in Olympia most likely to pass a bill. Senator King helped fund the Sozo Soccer Complex, giving local youth and adult soccer players a world-class recreational facility. Curtis King helped Perry Tech expand, providing thousands of local students with real-world skills, and he delivered funding for dozens of local road projects. I'm Senator Curtis King, and I'd appreciate your support. Thank you. If you've been considering updating your kitchen or bath countertops, be sure to attend the Costless Carpet Annual Slab Sale. This Saturday, Costless Carpet Designers and Fabricators will be on site. Every in-stock slab is on sale, with select slabs marked down up to 50%. 
choose from a huge selection of quartz, marble, and granite slabs. Fabricators will only be on site this Saturday from 9 to 5. So ring in your plans and drawings for instant savings. Find your nearest Costless Carpet at costlesscarpet.com. The last few years have been tough on Washington families who are facing record prices and wages just haven't kept up. But it's been a great few years for Congressman Dan Newhouse. Since he first got elected in 2015, his net worth has climbed from $2 million to almost $19 million. How'd he do that? By trading stocks of corporations that he votes to give billions of taxpayer dollars. It's time to put an end to Congressman Dan Newhouse's stock market hot streak. I'm Jared Sessler, and I approve this message. The White Card, a powerful resource for former Hanford and DUE employees. If you worked in the area and have come down with cancer, lung disease, Parkinson's, or renal Failure, you may be eligible for financial compensation and health care services. A simple phone call can get the process started. Atomic Home Health. Don't wait. Call today. 27 years ago, I lived in these apartments. And for 27 years, I've seen streets go without repair. I've seen places like Columbia Fruit Packers lay off workers. Some of my neighbors have driven to Seattle for decent medical care. Because MAGA extremists like my opponent, Deb, care more about power and controlling women's bodies than getting results. I am ready to go to the west side because it's time to get results for the east side. I hope to earn your vote. Kraken Hockey, now on free TV as the five-game homestand winds out. This historic season's heating up and off to a strong start. Don't miss a single moment of the action. Kraken, Jets, pregame at 6.30 tonight on Apple Valley News Now. Judy Justice. And I'm just getting started. Today at 4 on Apple Valley News Now. Welcome back to Good Morning Northwest and entertainment news. Superstar Justin Timberlake is postponing some shows due to an illness. He is currently on his Forget Tomorrow world tour. But this Tuesday, is going to ruin the tour. I think so. Yeah. yeah, he's had some bad PR as of late. But Tuesday, Timberlake announced on social media that six upcoming shows, including ones in Chicago, Detroit, and Milwaukee, will be rescheduled for February. The singer says it's because he's been battling bronchitis and laryngitis, and he's also apologized to his fans. Tuesday's announcement comes after Timberlake postponed a show in Newark earlier this month due to an unknown injury. In more entertainment news, Cardi B says she won't be performing at an Atlanta music festival this weekend due to a medical emergency. The 32-year-old rapper wrote on Instagram Wednesday, quote, I'm so sad to share this news, but I've been in the hospital the last couple of days and I won't be able to perform at one music fest. And she added, thank you for understanding and I'll be back better and stronger soon. And there were no details of the medical emergency on her current condition. Cardi B gave birth to her third child with rapper Offset last month. They are currently going through a divorce. And I said this earlier, but Cardi B is not A-okay. Do you like that? No? Boo? I do. I do. Mm, I don't understand. Like I'm, I'm just pretending like I don't. I understand the reference, but I actually don't. No. What? Okay, well, I will tell you in a few minutes. Okay. And coming up next on Good Morning Northwest at 530. And this week's update on the Madsen City Council, Emily Goodell tells us there's no progress on the 2024 budget. And this after the budget was not brought to the meeting. That in-depth story is coming up in the next half hour. But first, here are your Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, a new perk for Amazon Prime subscribers. Users will now get a 10 cent per gallon discount at 7,000 Amico, BP, and AMPM gas stations. The catch is you must have Earnify, the loyalty program for BP and BP-owned stations. Next, gaming platform Roblox is making changes aimed at protecting children. They include a new type of account that lets parents manage their kids' activity. The changes follow recent reports about Roblox not doing enough to keep kids safe. Finally, TikTok is expanding its feed featuring educational content. The STEM feed is an optional feed related to science, technology, engineering, and math. It previously targeted users who were under 18, but now adults will also get the STEM feed by default. It comes after lawmakers criticize TikTok for the content they say it pushes in the U.S. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. Some people just know they can save hundreds on car insurance by checking Allstate first. Like, you know to check the weather first before sailing. It's going to get nasty later. Yep. Hey, perfect day for sailing, huh? Have fun on land. 
I'll go tell the Coast Guard. Yep. Yeah, checking first is smart. So check Allstate first for a quote that could save you hundreds. You're in good hands with Allstate. Ah, mornings. Cough? Congestion? I'm feeling better. All in one and done. With Mucinex Kickstart. Headache? Better now. Mucinex Kickstart gives all in one and done relief with a morning jolt of instant cooling sensation. It's comeback season. Panera's mac and cheese? Fave. Tomato soup in a bread bowl? Fave. All your favorites, always at Panera. So grab a chocolate chipper. We know it's a fave too. Panera. Free. No fee delivery for My Panera Rewards members on our app. This is Apple Valley News Now. Good morning, Northwest. On your side. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for Good Morning Northwest. I'm Jessica Jalal. And I'm Josh Colbert. All right, Josh, I was looking up the national days for today, and it's something called My Best Winter Skin Day. I see that here in the teleprompter. Yeah, I, I put that there so, yeah. so I could be reminded. But it's kind of feeling like... I guess close to winter, not really Washington winter yet, because that's usually colder temperatures. But I mean, I'm not looking forward to that because winter skin for me means eczema. My best winter skin day? Yeah. Like, so it's, it's a day celebrating your, your, oh, your best winter I'll skin? I'll look it up later. But Might that's well, what just it's feel like. like national I just thought of eczema because that's what I get during the yeah. winter. Well, yeah, lotion up. It's going to be dry. It's going to be crisp <laughs> out there. It's really fun. As, um, we had a cold front that passed the other day. And anyway, let's just go ahead and show you those temperatures out there for this morning. Right now, you're taking a live look at Yakima. This view coming courtesy of Bymart. All the city lights down below. It is very cold in the Yakima Valley for this morning. So we're seeing temperatures around 30 degrees. So this is where you would want to break out the ice scraper for this morning or turn on the vehicle a little bit earlier to get the, the deep defrost really going but maybe just a little bit too warm for that in the lower Columbia Basin as we're in the mid to upper 30s and then mid 30s to low 40s in the foothills of the Blue Mountains. Here's your hour by hour forecast for today. You see we're going to struggle to make it out of the 40s up until lunchtime. Then we're going to be in the 50s in the Tri-Cities. So a cool day where you're going to need a jacket on hand for most of the day if not all of the day. Probably a heavy jacket necessary for this morning. We do have a freeze warning still in place for the Yakima Valley until 9 this morning. And then we have a freeze watch in place for the lower Columbia Basin and Blue Foothills. That runs from 11 p.m. tonight to 9 in the morning tomorrow morning. So that is where you would probably have to protect the outdoor pets, the plants, and the plumbing. So for today, most sunny skies. It's going to be cool. I'll take you on a zone-by-zone zone tour of today's forecast. And also I'll have a sneak preview at this weekend's forecast, the wet weather we can get from that. So all that's going to be coming up in a few minutes. Thank you, Josh. Now, starting off your half hour in a follow up, this week's city council meeting found Mapton stalling its 2024 budget process. The council and citizens are at odds with the mayor over a potential solution for the city's water issues. Apple Valley News Now's Emily Goodell tells us local educators are also speaking up. Over the past several months, the city of Mountain has lost its police chief and a police sergeant, leaving the duty of policing the entire city on the shoulders of just one officer who may not be with the department much longer. The school district's interim superintendent concerned about Officer Ryan Sullivan policing the city alone and only on duty at night. During the day, there is no police presence, which puts our students, staff, and community at risk. Officer Sullivan confirmed he's exploring other job opportunities. We we'll have no city police officers after that point. We want to make sure that we're giving voice to our staff and our students um, and that our safety is a priority for the city. But the city hasn't asked the Yakima County Sheriff's Office for help. We have not been contacted by the city of Mapton. Uh, to contract any type of law enforcement services for them. 911 dispatchers will still take down callers' information, and deputies will still only respond to major crimes in progress. We arrive, uh, stabilize the situation, and hand over the investigation to the CD of Mapton. Whatever they do with it after that is up to them. No police means no investigations and no arrests. And since the city hasn't posted any open police positions on its website, the police department's future is uncertain. The city also stalling progress on the 2024 budget, trying to hold a final public hearing Tuesday night without hearing about the budget. Where is the budget for review? Um, the girls didn't bring any of them 
So how can the public comment on it if there is if there are no copies? The city's temporary finance employee, Jameson Horner, absent from the meeting, but telling council members in a memo that the city's revenue has decreased significantly, and she doesn't know why. General fund utility tax and franchise fee revenue at four hundred and one thousand dollars in twenty twenty one, down to just eighty thousand dollars this year, an eighty percent decrease. Revenue for goods and services for the cemetery fund at seventy one thousand dollars in twenty twenty one, dropping down to just twelve thousand fifty dollars in twenty twenty four. So you want to table it? Yes. The council pushing back after months of asking the mayor to set up a meeting with the city's engineering firm and the EPA about a grant that could help the city with its water problems. It has not happened and, and the time is going by but we're not able to uh, apply for this grant. The grant, 10 to 20 million dollars that could be used for a water treatment facility. But to be eligible, the city needs to partner with a nonprofit. Maria Fernandez, director of Empowering Latina Leadership in Action, saying they can help, but they need to start now. This application is due November 21st. It is a beast of an application. I am a grant writer, but we're really pushing it. Either a real concentrated focus needs to happen in order to get this in, or AI needs to be just notified that you know the city leadership isn't interested so that we can move on to other projects. Fernandez leaving without an answer. Let's do another Thank you. We're done. No, I'm not done. I'm not done. No, I'm not done. Not. Yeah, we gotta move on. The mayor previously petitioned for an anti-harassment protection order against Fernandez that was denied by a judge. I I would like you to put aside your differences and do what's best for the city and our water. You know, swallow your pride or whatever it is and 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 get this meeting going so we can see if we can qualify for this grant. Thank you, Sophia. But yeah, businesses need to be put aside. What needs to be put first is the community, the people, the families. The meeting leaving the city with no final budget for 2024, no direction on that possible grant opportunity, and no idea what the future holds for the Mabton Police Department. Reporting from the Ackerman Newsroom, Emily Goodell, Apple Valley News Now. Turning to election news, with election day less than two weeks away, a last-minute shakeup for the Benton County Republican Party. The chairman, Semi Bird, who ran for governor in this election but later dropped out, has officially resigned as chair late last night. Now, Bird is also known as a former director on the Richland School Board before he was recalled by voters. In a statement to Apple Valley News Now, Bird said, quote, My politics are based on my principles, and my principles are based on my faith, my family. Faith and principles take priority over the darkness of partisan politics, end quote. Now, Republican candidate for Congress Jared Sessler, who was endorsed by the Benton County GOP, spoke with our team about the developments, and here's what he said last night. I haven't talked to him since last night. He didn't. He didn't call me or talk to me that he was planning on on uh, stepping down. But I'll say that, you know, there has been a vacuum of leadership, and this is not, you know, a hit on anybody. I know that there was a small group, you know, a couple months ago to basically oust him because he he wasn't available, and so they'll probably the PCOs will probably just elect a, somebody to fill in during that time or. You know, the vice chair will just step up and fill into that spot. I don't think that this change will have any effect on the on the actual vote. You know, the ballots are in the boxes. PCOs know the work they need to do. I know Semi personally, and I know he wouldn't, you know, make a move that would negatively affect the election for Republicans. Now, we also reached out to Sessler's GOP opponent, Dan Newhouse, but we have not heard back yet. Looking ahead today, the Columbia Basin Badger Club is hosting a forum this afternoon. Now, the topic is called electing a judge. Two candidates are vying for a position on the Benton Franklin Superior Court, Sean Sant and Bronson Brown. At the forum, people can learn more about the candidates and what the position is about. The forum starts at noon and goes on until 1 p.m. Also, the Yakima Training Center is hosting its second annual Fall Festival this weekend, and one of the few times the military installation is open to the public. The festival will have military displays, an antique car show, a variety of food trucks, and boutique tents for shopping. There will also be a DJ in the morning and live music in the afternoon. Plus, there will be a pumpkin patch and a hay maze for the kids.
this is a time when the installation is open to the public so they can not only come in and have some fun, but they can also see see how we accomplish our mission here at YTC, and they can also see the different jobs available in all branches of the military. The festival entry cost is $10 per car, and the event is from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Saturday. Anybody 17 or younger will need to have an adult with them, and anybody 16 or older will need a photo ID. Up next on Good Morning Northwest, more bad news for Boeing as the walkout continues after workers rejected the latest offer. We have a recap on what this offer included and what's next after the break. Kraken, Jets, pregame at 6.30 tonight on Apple Valley News Now. It's Carl's Jr.'s new ghost burger. Layers of soul scorching sauce, ghost pepper cheese, bacon. It's a spicy charbroiled phenomenon. Watch me make this one vanish. The new ghost, only at Carl's Jr. Big burger! Get burger. The last few years have been tough on Washington families who are facing record prices and wages just haven't kept up. But it's been a great few years for Congressman Dan Newhouse. Since he first got elected in 2015, his net worth has climbed from $2 million to almost $19 million. How'd he do that? By trading stocks of corporations that he votes to give billions of taxpayer dollars. It's time to put an end to Congressman Dan Newhouse's stock market hot streak. I'm Jared Sessler, and I approve this message. Liberal Democrats, Maria Beltran, Anna Kennedy, and Chelsea Demas support even no questions asked, late-term abortions. They oppose measures that would lower taxes, make gas cheaper, and let you take home more of your paycheck. They would make your streets less safe, raise your gas prices, and encourage your children to disrespect faith, family, and America. Seattle Liberals, Maria Beltran, Anna Kennedy, and Chelsea Demas do not share your values and are too extreme for Central Washington. This holiday season, believe in the magic of the North Pole. As you set sail for a holiday adventure like no other, marvel over the stunning light display along the magical journey to meet Santa. Experience the magic that only happens on Lake Coeur d'Alene. Even the Grinch can't resist the holiday cheer. Book during Santa's sneak peek week and enjoy 25% off tickets from November 15th to November 27th and discover the magic of the holiday season. Save through Monday with Buy Mart's latest savings book. Pick up a copy in store today. Save on seasonal favorites. Twin packs of Kraft Stovetop Stuffing Mix are now two for $6. Plus save on Swanson's Beef or Chicken Broth, Idaho and Potatoes, and Fran's Soft Baked Cookies are just two for $5. Make cooking a breeze. A Hamilton Beach six-quart slow cooker is hot priced at $19.99. Plus check out our new Buy Mart laundry detergent. Members save more with our latest savings book at Buy Mart. Carl's Jr. Big Carl fans know nothing beats the taste of charbroiled beef, American cheese, and Carl's classic sauce. Except getting a second Big Carl for just one dollar. Buy one, get one for a buck. Only at Carl's Jr. Big Burger! Get Burger! Halloween on Live will be filled with tricks. Ah! And treats. Ah. Next Live, Juno Temple from Venom The Last Dance. Today at 9 on Apple Valley News Now. One great idea can change your life. That's the American dream right there. I want to be on a team with you. Shark Tank, new Friday on ABC and stream on Hulu. From Apple Valley News Now, first alert weather with Chief Meteorologist Josh Colbert. Welcome back to Good Morning Northwest. Let's take you on a tour of today's forecast. Starting off in Kittitas County, we will end up in the 40s and 50s. 56 for Ellensburg, 53 in Cleelum. It's going to be mostly sunny skies in the valley, more clouds up in the mountains, light winds overall. And then in the Yakima Valley, obviously that cold start that we have for this morning. And a little bit later today, it's just going to be cool. You know, no, no winds though, or at least no significant wind gusts to make it feel any colder than it otherwise will. So we're going to end up in the mid 50s, but plenty of sunshine. So we'll feel a little bit warmer in the sunshine. Should be mostly sunny skies in the lower Columbia Basin as well. Also light winds here, high temperatures in some locations getting up into the upper 50s, 57 for Hermiston, 58 in the Tri-Cities. And then in the foot, foothills of the blues, mostly sunny skies here, high temperatures getting into the middle to upper 50s, 57, maybe, you know, kind of borderline upper 50s, 56 for Pendleton. 
So all in all, a nice day, a dry day. We're going to have a carbon copy of today's forecast into Friday, but late Saturday into early Monday, we have a storm system that's going to bring a decent amount of wet weather. And here's what we're thinking is going to happen to the rainfall deficit. Here's what it's going to look like heading into the storm system spanning 60 to 90 percent deficits, actually 50 to 90 percent deficits. But I'm thinking that those deficits will still be deficits after this storm system, but they're going to be much smaller deficits. And I'll put an actual rainfall amount to these numbers coming up in a few minutes. Thank you, Josh. Now, more bad news for Boeing. Striking workers have voted down its latest contract offer. That's according to a union announcement last night. Now, the walkout continues, and so do Boeing's losses. Amy Kylie reports on what that means for the company. We have not achieved enough to meet our members' demands. A strike of about 33,000 Boeing workers continues. That's after union members voted down a proposed contract deal yesterday by about 64%. I am proud of this membership. They will continue to stand strong in the picket line. The vote means Boeing's airplane manufacturing is likely to remain at a virtual standstill. That's a huge financial blow. If the current issue is not resolved quickly in terms of the machinists going back to work, that threat of Chapter 11 bankruptcy is not very far in the future. Boeing's latest contract offer of a 35% raise over four years was better than its last one of 25%. But many union members say they want more. The general wage increase offer that they've made doesn't bring us up to the present. Some are still holding out for a return of pensions, though the company says that's a non-starter. That's about $600 a month that I'm not getting because the pension ended on me. Boeing's CEO says he's committed to resetting the company's relationship with its workers. That comment is from an earnings call yesterday. Boeing's third quarter report shows a net loss of more than $6 billion. We're clearly at a crossroads. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Boeing's financial struggles aren't solely due to the strike. It's been reporting losses since its second fatal 737 MAX crash in 2019. And coming up next on Good Morning Northwest, the DOJ is warning Elon Musk that his latest announcement could be violating federal law. This after he says anyone who signs a petition in support of the First and Second Amendments will be entered to win a daily drawing of $1 million. We have the details coming up in your morning sprint, but first, Chief Meteorologist Josh Colbreth will have your full weather forecast. 18 years, 32 years, 20 years, 35 years. A job not only supports a family, but it gives you dignity. I'm Maria Beltran. With warehouses closing and hundreds of jobs lost, it's time we elect a fighter. Like so many of us, my family struggles to keep up with the cost of groceries and afford rent. Your family's struggles are my family's struggles. I'll work hard for you in Olympia. Paid for by friends Maria Beltran. I've been with U.S. Cellular for 27 years. They've always taken care of me. But when they asked me to talk to you about their special customer event, Us Days, I said, I gotta get in shape. So they sent me this Hollywood trainer. Oh, this guy's no joke. Hmm. Us Days means exclusive deals just for us customers. Oh. Now let's try burpees. Us Days is back at U.S. Cellular. Current customers get $1,200 off any phone, plus $400 off any tablet. If you've been considering updating your kitchen or bath countertops, be sure to attend the Costless Carpet Annual Slab Sale. This Saturday, Costless Carpet designers and fabricators will be on site. Every in-stock slab is on sale, with select slabs marked down up to 50%. Choose from a huge selection of quartz, marble, and granite slabs. Fabricators will only be on site this Saturday from 9 to 5. So rein in your plans and drawings for instant savings. Find your nearest Costless Carpet at costlesscarpet.com. The leaves are falling, and so are the prices at Overture Kia. The new 2025 Kia Sportage gives you three great ways to save fuel. Available with a fuel-efficient gas engine, a gas-electric hybrid, or as a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. A new 2025 Kia Sportage with all-wheel drive starts at just $30,935. Plus, get 3.99 percent interest for up to 72 months over turf kia at the base of the blue bridge in kennewick initiative 2124 it's purposely misleading so here's what you need to know 
Independent analysts say if I-2124 passes, it will bankrupt our affordable long-term care benefit, leaving millions of Washingtonians with no options but private insurance that charges way too much and routinely denies coverage to millions with pre-existing conditions. Don't let it happen. Protect your long-term care benefits. Vote no on I-2124. Be sure and vote. Mail-in ballots must be postmarked by November 5th. From Apple Valley News Now, First Alert Weather with Chief Meteorologist Josh Colbert. Welcome back to Good Morning Northwest. Today is going to be a nice day, albeit a cool day, as we'll be about 5 degrees below average for this time of the year. Mid-50s in the valleys will be in the mid to upper 50s in the basin, then mid-50s in the foothills of the Blue Mountains. Light winds for today, but it is going to be jacket weather for most of the day, if not all of the day. And then for tonight, Certainly heavy jacket weather at this point. We're going to be below freezing in the Kittitas and Yakima Valleys, right around freezing in the lower Columbia Basin and pretty adjacent to freezing in the Blue Foothills as well. So most spots will have to protect the outdoor pets, the plants and the plumbing for tonight. Also, clouds will start to pick up a little bit into this evening, partly to mostly cloudy skies, but Friday should be another dry day. And then we're tracking some much more active weather into this weekend, specifically late Saturday into early on Monday. Sunday is probably going to be the uh, 20, you know, in terms of the wettest day within this time frame. Uh, it will be the wettest day and then we'll be a little bit drier into Tuesday. We're tracking another storm system into the middle of next week. So for late Saturday into early Monday, again, that time frame, I'm thinking maybe two inches of water up in the Cascades between a tenth to a half an inch for the valleys and basin and between a quarter to a half an inch for the foothills and for the Blue Mountains. And there could be a little bit of a wintry element to the storm system as well as Monday into Tuesday. Snow levels are going to plunge down to around 4,500 feet. They're going to bounce between 3,500 to 4,500 feet. So places like Cabbage Hill and Meacham, Ukiah, the Battle Mountain Summit on US 395, also White Pass on US Highway 12. Those areas could see a little bit of snow. How much? Probably less than an inch. So we're not expecting any significant reductions to travel, but of course, it's it's something we're going to be tracking and tis the season, right? And temperatures not really doing anything spectacular over the next seven days. Here's the seven day forecast for the Tri Cities. Cool and dry Thursday and Friday, damp Saturday evening through Monday morning, dry for Tuesday, maybe some more wet weather into Wednesday. And then for Yakima, crisp and dry for the next couple days. Then wet weather comes back into the forecast, likely peaking on Sunday. For Ellensburg, quiet weather through Friday, active late Saturday through early Monday, then maybe some more active weather into the middle of next week. For Hermiston, dry with highs in the upper 50s for Thursday and Friday, active Saturday evening through Monday morning, a reprieve for Tuesday, but maybe more slated for Wednesday. Then for Walla Walla, nice dry fall days Thursday and Friday, chances for wet weather start on Saturday, peak on Sunday and Monday, but also stick around for Tuesday and Wednesday. Now, the morning sprint. Time is now 5.52. It's time for your morning sprint in our 5 o'clock hour. And first up, here are the top five local stories you need to know this morning. The Walla Walla County Sheriff's Office is investigating a homicide that happened at a mobile home park. The shooting happened just after 1.30 Wednesday at the Prescott Mobile Estates Park just off of F Street. Authorities say one man has been arrested, but one person who suffered injuries died at the scene. We'll continue to update you with more information as soon as it's available. This week's council meeting for Mapton results in no progress on the 2024 budget. The budget was not brought to the meeting. The council and citizens are also at odds with the mayor over a potential solution for the city's water issues. This means Mabden still has no final budget, no direction on a possible grant opportunity to solve its water issues, and additionally is facing uncertainty with the future of their police department. A last minute shakeup for the Bend County Republican Party. Semi Bird has officially resigned from his position as chairman last night. Bird ran for governor in this election, but later dropped out. He's also known as a former director for the Richland School Board before he was recalled by voters. To see a statement on why he dropped out, stay tuned for our 630 hour.
Now there will be a meeting at the AC Davis High School Auditorium discussing the challenges and opportunities in public education funding in Washington State. Members of the community, school administrators and policymakers are invited to learn more about the future of the state's public schools. Again, the event is tonight at AC Davis High School um, in Yakima and the event starts at 6 p.m. The Columbia Basin Badger Club is hosting a forum this afternoon and the topic will be electing a judge. Two candidates are vying for a position on the Benton Franklin Superior Court. That's Sean Sant and Bronson Brown. And at the forum, people can learn more about the candidates and what the position is about. The forum starts at noon and goes until 1 p.m. In your national headlines this morning, the government has ordered Goldman Sachs and Apple to pay a combined $89 million over what it calls the mishandling of their Apple Card partnership. Goldman was fined $45 million and will have to pay customers $20 million. Apple was fined $25 million and the Federal Bureau found the companies misled customers about interest-free payment plans on Apple products. And the Justice Department is warning Elon Musk that his sweepstakes for swing state voters America may violate federal election state. law. Musk says people who sign a petition in support of the First and Second Amendments will enter a random daily drawing for a million dollar prize. However, to sign it, you must be registered to vote in certain states and federal law prohibits paying people to register to vote. In response, Musk said anybody could sign the petition and that they don't even have to vote. On day two of the sweepstakes, the messaging changed, saying winners would be selected to earn a million dollars as payment for serving as a spokesperson for the America PAC. However, election law experts say the official terms of the entry are still the same. In your health headlines, questions still linger about what's at the root of the McDonald's E. coli outbreak. The National Onion Association says while everyone waits for answers from the FDA, they want to reassure people there is a food safety plan in place for growers, shippers, and packers. However, once the onions ship, it's out of their hands. The association says when it comes to the onions that you're buying from the store, you're safe because the issues would be more widespread. And new research shows a common gesture could be a sign of a concussion. The study shows a quick shake of the head after a hard hit could signal a concussion and the movement is known as a spontaneous head shake after a kinematic event. The formal recognition of this head shake as a sign of a concussion could help identify undiagnosed ones. All right, trending now, Oregon's Bureau of Land Management's annual Bat Beauty Contest has returned for 2024. Yes, a beauty contest for bats. My interest is peaked. <laughs> well, each October, the BLM hosts a beauty contest to find the most stunning bat photographed on BLM lands across the county, probably across the country. <laughs> so let's take a look at the contenders. On the left is Hori Potter. He's a Mel Hori Bat with a feisty personality. Okay, I like that name. I'm a big fan of Harry Potter. So on the right is Honey Bunches of Myotis, a long-eared Myotis bat. And you can vote on these bats starting today. And the event ends on Halloween. The event is intended to bring awareness about bat conservation. And bats play an essential role in Oregon and also in the Pacific Northwest. And fun fact, one bat can eat up to 1,200 mosquitoes in an hour. And I saw on the National Today calendar that it's Bat Appreciation Week. So I, maybe I like they that. did that on purpose. I like that better than uh, best winter skin day. Oh, Let's, winter skin. <laughs> I think Bat Appreciation Week should trump Out that. of those yeah. two, though, who'd you like? I think I liked Harry Potter, but maybe because of the name. Yeah. Uh, he had a first uh, feisty personality, Yeah, right? see, they so, even described his personality. I think I, he's up to that. bat. I'm going to go with that one as well. <laughs> yep. Well, coming up next on Good Morning Northwest at 6, we meet Rango, a four-month-old puppy who's up for adoption, and you don't want to miss more on this cute little face. We meet him in our Operation Best Friend segment that's coming up in our 6 o'clock hour. And we have a freeze warning that's in place for this morning. Also, another freeze watch that's in place for tonight into tomorrow morning. I'll tell you who's impacted by all of that coming up at 6.